I can say one of the greatest inventions of the 20th century is the invention of GPS. Before GPS was invented, we rely on physical maps. How many of you remember doing that? Like traveling long distance and using a map. And if you're by yourself, you, have, you, you can't drive while looking at the map. You have to stop and then look at the map and then from there you drive again. It's so inconvenient, that's why you need to have a navigator to help you to, go, to, to be able to, uh, able to go to your destination. That's why, uh, as, as I've said, um, the GPS, I, I could say, is the, 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 one of the greatest inventions of the 20th century. And I just look up, when did we start having GPS? And it was in the 80s, okay? But it's only for luxurious cars. But in the year 2000, of course, we, we saw uh, Garmin started selling this GPS, the portable GPS that you could just stick on the windshield and then put the address and then it will calculate the shortest distance or the shortest time for you to arrive at your destination. I don't know about you, but for me, even with GPS, I still get lost. You know, it will tell me to turn right and I will get distracted of what I see and I will continue going, moving forward, right? And, but the, the nice thing about GPS is that it's very patient. Even though you get distracted, you don't follow the GPS, the GPS doesn't lose its patience, right? The tone doesn't change. It will just make a U-turn, okay? Take the right turn or like that. It doesn't change the tone. It's very patient. And it's the same in our journey, also in our spiritual life. The Lord has given us spiritual GPS. And so many times, we easily get lost also. But the Lord is very patient, calling us back so that we will be on the right track again so that we will be able to arrive at our destination. And what is our destination? Where is our destination? Heaven. That's, where, that, that's, that's the desire of the Lord, that all of us, as long as we follow the spiritual GPS, we will be, arrive at our destination, which is heaven. Okay? Now, uh, in our gospel today, Joseph was so tempted to go on his own way, and he has this big dilemma. He found Mary to be pregnant. And so he wanted to dismiss her or divorce her. And there are several theories why he was planning to do that. And I think the most popular one is the suspicion theory. He suspected that Mary committed adultery. And because of that, the Jewish law allows the man to, to, for, for, for him to separate from his wife, he has to stone her to death. And Joseph doesn't want to do that. So that's the theory, one theory. But I think the most accurate theory is the reverence theory. St. Joseph, I'm sure he's familiar with Scripture. He's familiar with this, the prophecy uh, from, the prophet, from the prophet Isaiah, which is in our first reading today, where it says there, the young virgin is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. So Joseph was not doubting about the purity and the innocence of Mary, but he is doubting about his worthiness and about his ability to be able to take care of the mother of God and also this child, right? That's why he wanted to dismiss Mary. And so that's what he did. Uh, he, 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 he wanted to do that, but the Lord intervened. The Lord spoke, spoke to him in a dream, uh, to an angel. The angel told him, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from his sins, from their sins. And again, 
the angel confirm what is said in our first sitting today, the prophecy in Isaiah chapter uh, 7. So when Joseph awoke from his sleep, he did as the angel commanded him to do. He took Mary for his wife. And Joseph is in the, uh, has this lineage, is part of the lineage of the Davidic kings. Okay? And even though Jesus is not his biological son, Jesus is his son by law. Okay? There, therefore, Jesus has this legal right to be called a descendant of David. Okay? So one of the role of a father is to name his son. Okay? And also to welcome this son into his house, which is David's house. So imagine if Joseph was able to do what he's planning to do, which is to divorce Mary, we will not have Jesus. Okay? Mary was the one who gave birth to Jesus but it was Joseph who named him Jesus. Okay, so it's very, really, it's really very uh, important. How many of you here have experienced being at the crossroads in your life? You have two options, okay? You have two options, you know, uh, whether that's through vocation, what vocation, or maybe what degree that you want to take uh, in university or uh, where you would reside, a city, or a town, or a country. And I had this dilemma. I, I'm like this woman, like scratching, scratching her head, right? When, when I was uh, discerning where I should go, I have two options. Either go to Australia or go to Canada. Both are good, okay? And then I also had this, uh, this, this dilemma when I sensed the calling to the priesthood I was discerning between joining the Jesuit in the Philippines or joining the Companions of the Cross here in Canada. I'm glad I followed my spiritual GPS, otherwise I won't be here, serving you here in Canada and be part of the Companions of the Cross, right? And, uh, and the thing is, both are good. So that's why it's hard. It's hard to decide. S Stephen Covey, once said, he's the author of the Seven Habits of the Highly Effective People. He said, the enemy of the best is often the good. Sometimes we think the enemy of the best is the worst or the bad, right? But the enemy of the best is often the good. God's will is always best for us. But many times, we settle for what is good, which is our will, right? So we need to know what is God's will. That's why God sends spiritual GPS to really help us to know what His will is and for us to follow it. That's why, you know, my, the, 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 my, the GPS, what does it stand for? God's positioning system. He's going to position you to be able to follow His will. And He speaks to us. Okay? He, he spoke to Joseph in his dream. Uh, for, for me, uh, I, I, had a, I had a prophetic dream uh, a, a few weeks ago, and sometimes the dream is literal, but sometimes it's symbolic. What Joseph experienced was a literal dream, right? No interpretation needed. But, if, but for me, I experienced a symbolic dream uh, which I can't share right now. Maybe in the future, I'll, I'll, I'll share it. And, and I was able to have an interpretation of my dream. And, and to that, I think I sense, uh, I know what the Lord wants me to do in this coming next two years in my priesthood. And uh, so, so, yeah, so, uh, so uh, as I said, uh, maybe I'll share that uh, more uh, uh, in the future. So this, the Lord speaks to us in our dreams. The Lord speaks us to, you know, uh, whenever you're reading a spiritual book, right? Whenever you're uh, attending Mass, the Lord is speaking to you. The Lord is speaking to you through people. And also, um, how many of you here went to a, like a retreat and there you were able to know God's will? How many of you have, have been to a retreat? Okay, 
Retreat is a very conducive place, right? There's time of silence. Uh, you read scripture. Uh, maybe you listen to a talk or whatever. And you always invoke the Holy Spirit and practice the presence of Jesus during that retreat. And by that, you would know His God's will. And, but so many, many people do not have that luxury of going on a retreat. People are busy. But we could also apply what, we've, what we would do in a retreat in our daily life. So I'll just share with you three things that we could do so that we would be more predisposed to know God's will and be able to follow it, okay? So the first one is to meditate on God's word every day. Meditate and ponder. In Psalm 119, it says, the world, the world, the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, okay? The, law, the, the word gives us that direction, okay? The second thing that we could uh, do, do is fi be filled with the Holy Spirit every day. Invoke the Holy Spirit in our life and follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 16, it says there, when the Spirit of the truth comes, He will guide you into all the truth. That's why it's so important because this, it's the Spirit of truth. It will lead us. It's so many times we could be deceived by lies but, or by what we think is the best for us, right? That's why we need the Holy Spirit. The third thing is to follow Jesus closely, okay? He's our, he's our good shepherd, and we are his sheep. We know him. We are in a relationship with him. We hear his voice, and we follow him. Okay? In Psalm chapter 25, it says there, Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. On you I wait all the day. I think this is very crucial for us. We need to grow in our ability to wait. To wait for the Lord. Sometimes we just get so impatient, right? We just want to do it quickly. And many times we do it our will. That's why we need to wait. Wait for the Lord. He will tell us. He's our good shepherd. He will never uh, mis mislead us, right? So those three things, meditate on God's work, be filled with the Holy Spirit, follow Jesus closely. So as I've said, just like GPS, right? It will direct us and guide us to our destination. It's the same. The Lord is giving us spiritual GPS so that it will guide us and lead us on our way to our destination, which is heaven. And as we follow that spiritual GPS, we will be able to imitate Mary and Joseph, to be able to bring Jesus to the world. And how, how is that possible that we will be able to bring Jesus to this world? It's because by obeying God's will, we become more and more like Jesus. So that as we grow and become more like Jesus, we will be able to share that love, that joy, that peace to people that we encounter in our life. So I encourage everyone, all of us, follow our GPS.